let's take a look at number one from rational functions number one. Well, the first thing to recognize is that when we look at this and we don't see any x on top, it's an x to the zero. So when we focus on identifying if there is a horizontal asymptote, we can see the degree in the numerator is less than the degree in the denominator. When the degree in the numerator is smaller or less than the degree in the denominator, we automatically have a horizontal asymptote at y equals zero. So my horizontal asymptote is y equals zero. Now we're able to determine a vertical asymptote by taking the denominator and setting it equal to zero and solving. I add three to the opposite side, and I get x equals three. So my vertical asymptote occurs at x equals three. As a reminder from this morning when we talked about this in class, when we are looking at our functions, which we're going to graph in just a little bit, and we talk about the different asymptotes, your horizontal asymptote will help us to determine the end behavior. So the far left and the far right, what do we have for our inputs? What is it getting closer to? When we look at a vertical asymptote, our vertical asymptote, the function will never cross over the vertical asymptote. It will never touch the vertical asymptote. But it will help us as we look as the outputs become high, very large, and very low. It'll help us to look at that. And that will connect later on to limits. All right, well, let's go ahead and let's graph this. I'm going to choose a number to the right. So 1, 2, 3, 4. I'm going to choose a number here to the right. So I'm going to choose 4. 6 over 4 minus 3 would be 6 over 1. So when my input, when my input was 4, my output is 6. So I'm going to go over 4 and up 6. 2, 4, 6. So I know I have a function that looks something like this. And I'm going to choose a number just to the left of the vertical asymptote, which is 2. So 6 over 2 minus 3 would be 6. I'm sorry, 6 over negative 1, which is equivalent to negative 6. Go over 2 and down 6. 2, 4, 6. Now, how do we determine what? So in this case, um, how do we determine what the y-intercept will be? Well, whenever we determine a y-intercept, the x is always 0. So let's plug in 0. 0 minus 3 is, ne sorry, zero minus three is negative 3, and 6 divided by negative 3 is negative 2. So I'm going to go 0, negative 2. It will just help us to draw a more accurate graph. And we have no x-intercepts. So there's no x-intercepts. We have a y-intercept at 0, negative 2. And then we can see precisely where our graph goes here. 